Hello boys and girls, this is Teacher Mike, and today I'd like to talk to you about different measuring tools. First, we're going to review what these measuring tools are and how we can use them appropriately, and then we're going to look at some objects and choose the correct tool to measure this object with. Let's get started right away. The first tool I'd like to talk to you about is the ruler. A ruler is 12 inches long and is used to measure smaller objects. When we use the ruler, we want to make sure that objects that we measure are smaller than the ruler so that way we can measure them really accurately. The next tool I'd like to talk to you about is a yardstick or a meter stick. A yardstick is exactly three feet long because there are three feet in one yard. A meter stick is about three feet long, so we can use a meter stick and a yardstick kind of in the same way. We use a meter stick or a yardstick to measure bigger things because a meter stick or a yardstick is like having three rulers on top of each other. We use a yardstick for bigger things like a table. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is a plastic tape measure. Now, a plastic tape measure is really cool because you don't have to just measure straight objects with a plastic tape measure because the tape measure can bend and can be used to measure curvy objects like your hips. A plastic tape measure is a really unique measuring tool that can help measure objects that aren't perfectly shaped. The last measuring tool I'd like to teach you about is a metal tape measure. Now, a metal tape measure is very different than a plastic tape measure. A metal tape measure can be from 50 to 200 feet long, meaning it can measure things like houses and cars. A metal tape measure is really big for measuring things that other tools can't measure. Now, let's read the directions for our worksheet and get started right away. Help Steve measure different things in his house. Check the most suitable tool for each measurement. Let's get started. First, we have a nail, and our two choices for measurement are a ruler or a metal tape measure. Now, I remember telling you that a metal tape measure can measure distances between 50 and 200 feet. Is a nail really that big? I don't think so. In my estimate, or my best guess, I would say nail, a nail is a few inches long. So the best tool to measure a nail is, in fact, a ruler. We would only need one ruler to measure a nail, which makes this the right choice. The next object we want to look at is a soccer ball. And I can see for this measurement, we want to measure around the soccer ball. So really, to measure an object that's curvy or a round object, there's really only one choice that we talked about, the plastic tape measure, because that will help us measure curvy or imperfect objects. A ruler would not be an appropriate choice for this, because there is no straight line to measure on a soccer ball. The next object we want to measure, or choose the correct tool to help us measure, is this door. Now this door is pretty big, so I don't think a ruler is going to be enough because we're going to have to use multiple rulers to measure this door. But if we had one meter stick, I think we might be able to measure this door. We might need two, but still, it's more appropriate than using a ruler to measure the door. So let's choose the meter stick. Finally, we have a house. How big do you think this house is? Pretty big. Our two choices for the house are the ruler and the tape and the metal tape measure. If I were to measure this house using the ruler, I would need a lot of rulers. But if I were to measure just using one metal tape measure, I might be able to measure the whole house. So the metal tape measure is the appropriate choice here because it can measure distances or lengths from 50 to 200 feet long. Thanks for watching, boys and girls, and I hope you learned a little bit about selecting the correct measurement tool. We'll see you next time. Hello, I have a new worksheet today. The name of the worksheet is called Centimeters and Inches. Most rulers come with both inches and centimeter markings. Use the ruler to measure the picture below. Check the correct answer. So what we're gonna be doing is we've got all of these different things here and we're gonna be using that yellow ruler to measure those different things. 
Now let's look and kind of look at our ruler first and kind of get an idea of where everything is. When I look at this ruler, I see that these little ones are all going to be the centimeters. The centimeters are kind of the smaller ones that are really close together. And the inches are a little bit bigger. The inches are a little bit um, wider. So these are the inches down here. We're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna look at our options and it says we either have five centimeters, nine centimeters, or 10 centimeters. So we're just looking at centimeters right now. So we're gonna come down here and we're just gonna pay attention to the small numbers. These are these numbers right up here. We don't wanna get confused down here with these. We're just looking for a centimeter answer, okay? So let's look at the glove. We're gonna always start at the end of the ruler, okay? And we're gonna measure it or line it up with the end of the ruler and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna see where it stops. And it comes right down here and they've drawn out this little dotted line for us to show us where it ends. And it looks like it's gonna be right on the 10. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna check the correct answer it said. So I'm gonna put a check right here for 10 centimeters, okay? Let's go on to the next one. That was pretty easy. This one even says up here in red, it's inches. All our choices are gonna be inches. So now we're no longer looking at the small numbers, we're looking at the big numbers. But don't be confused. They kind of went to trick you on this one, I think, and they switched them up. Over here, the centimeters were on this side, but but now they're down at the bottom. So up here now, closer to the glove, is the inches. So we're looking for those ones that are wider, the bigger numbers, okay? We're looking for inches. So let's see, we've lined up our glove at the end of our ruler. We come all the way down here, and where does that last little part of our glove go to? It goes to the four. So it's gonna be four inches, and four is right over here. So I'm gonna put a check right on that one. The next thing we're measuring is a sock. Look at that sock. We're gonna come over here, and we're gonna measure the sock and this time it we are also looking for centimeters okay so centimeters are the little numbers so the little numbers they've got right next to the sock for us we're gonna we've got our sock lined up at the end of the ruler we're gonna come all the way down and it is lined up right over here so it is going to be 15 centimeters so I'm gonna put a check right there on the 15 our last one is another sock. We got a blue sock this time. It's a little bit smaller, might be a kid's sock. And we are looking once again for inches, okay? And the inches are the big numbers and they're already right over here on the end or closest to the sock. We've lined up our sock with the end and we're gonna measure all the way down and where does it come to? Our dotted line is going right to the five. So it's gonna be five inches. I'm gonna put a check right there. Measuring is so much fun and it's pretty easy, isn't it? You just have to check, you have to measure and look and see where everything's lined up, but we did it today. Nice job. Hello boys and girls, this is Teacher Mike. And today I'd like to talk to you about comparing the length of objects in centimeters. Meaning, we're gonna take two different objects and see which one is longer. And then we're gonna see how much longer that object is. So let's talk about a strategy for accomplishing this. So to figure out how much longer one object is than another object, first you have to measure both objects. Then you'll take the length of the shorter object and subtract it from the length of the longer object. So let's look at an example. Let's say we measured two different nails. The first nail we measured was five centimeters long. The second nail we measured was three centimeters long. Well, it's easy to tell that the five centimeter nail is longer, but how much longer? Well, we can subtract to find out. We always put the bigger number, or the longer object up top, and the shorter object up below. So let's subtract five minus three. We subtract five minus three, we get two. So I know the difference in length between these two objects is two centimeters. And we found this out through subtraction. Let's read the directions for our worksheet and get started right away. And let's use this strategy to help us to complete the worksheet. In each pair of objects, check the longer object. Then, circle the correct difference in length between the two objects. Let's look at our first two objects. We have a paperclip and an eraser. So let's look at the length of the paperclip. The paperclip starts at zero and goes to two centimeters. So we know our paper clip is two centimeters long. What about the eraser? If we look closely at the eraser, 
we can see the eraser is five centimeters long. Now we have to rearrange these numbers so the bigger number is on top, so that way we're subtracting the shorter number from the bigger number. So let's switch these numbers. We'll put five on top and subtract two away from five. What is five minus two? Well, it's three. So the difference in lengths is three centimeters. So now let's go ahead and fill in our worksheet. We know the eraser is bigger because it's five centimeters long. That's bigger than two centimeters for sure. How much bigger is the eraser than the paper clip? When we subtracted the length of the paper clip from the length of the eraser, we got three centimeters. So we know that the difference in length between the two objects is three centimeters. So let's go ahead and circle three. Let's take a look at our next two objects. We have a marker and a pen. Let's see how long the marker is. Well, if we look closely, again, it starts at zero. The marker goes from zero to eight centimeters long. So let's mark down that our marker is eight centimeters long. But what about the pen? How big is the pen? The pen starts at zero and goes all the way to 12. What is the difference between the pen and the marker if the pen goes to 12 centimeters? Well, again, we're gonna have to flip these numbers to find out. So let's put 12 on top and we'll subtract eight. We can count up from eight to 12 to find the difference between eight and 12. Let's go ahead and do that. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the difference is four centimeters. So let's go ahead and fill in our worksheet now. So just by looking at the two objects and using the ruler, which object is bigger? Well, of course the pen is bigger, so let's go ahead and check the pen. Now, how much bigger or how much longer is the pen than the marker? Well, when we subtracted the shorter object from the longer object, 12 minus eight, we got a difference of four centimeters. So we know that our pen is four centimeters longer than our marker. So let's go ahead and circle four centimeters. Remember, boys and girls, when you want to find the difference in length between two different objects, first, measure both objects. Then, subtract the, sh the length of the shorter object from the length of the longer object. The difference in the length of these two objects will tell you how much bigger one object is than the other. Thanks for watching, boys and girls, and we'll see you next time. Hello, boys and girls. This is Teacher Mike, and today I'd like to talk to you about estimating measurement. Now, this is kind of tricky, but it can also be kind of fun. If you can use references from your own life to make estimates or good guesses about sizes, estimating can become a lot more easy and even fun. You can point out different objects in the world and guess the sizes based on your reference estimates. So let's go over what some good estimates for some different sizes are. Let's first talk about one inch. One inch is the size of a bottle cap, like you pop off the top of a soda. An inch is really, really small. Can you think of some other things in the world around you that are about one inch? Let's talk about one foot. A foot is about the size of a hammer. Now a foot is 12 inches long. So it'd be like putting 12 bottle caps next to each other. But that's not really a good estimate. Can you think of other objects that are about the length of one foot? A hammer is a good suggestion, but what else can you think of? The last measurement that I'd like to go over is one yard. A yard is three feet long. Now, a good estimate for a yard is about the width of a door, not the height, because you need adults to get in the height of a door, so that's gonna be more than six feet long. The width of a door, meaning how wide it is, or how long it is, is about three feet or one yard long. So when you wanna estimate one yard, think about the width of a door. Now, let's use these estimates to help us answer the questions below. Let's read the directions in inches, feet, and yards and get started right away. Check the best estimate for the length of each object. Okay, first we have a clothespin and it wants to know the height or the length of this clothespin. It's marked off very nicely for us. So let's look at our answer choices and choose the most reasonable guess. So our first answer choice is two feet. Now think about the size of a clothespin. 
Now, think about two feet. That's like two hammers put right next to each other. Is a clothespin the size about two hammers? Clothespin is way smaller than two hammers. That can't be the right answer choice. Our next answer choice is two yards. Well, if two feet doesn't make sense, two yards can't make sense because that's even bigger. That's like the width of two doors. And a clothespin is tiny compared to that. Finally, we have two inches or two bottle caps put right next to each other. Does that make sense with the size of a clothespin? I think so. Now, is the clothespin exactly two inches? It might be, but it also might not be. But it's very close, and that's why we call it an estimate. It's like a good guess. So two inches is the correct estimate for our clothespin. Let's take a look at our next object, a dog. We want to know the length of this dog. Well, let's look at our answer choices and see if we can make sense of this. Our first answer choice is two inches. Two inches is going to be way too small because that's just like two bottle caps put right next to each other. I have never seen a puppy that small, even a brand newborn puppy. Two feet. Now that makes a little bit more sense. Can you imagine two hammers put right next to each other? That is about the length of the dog. So I think that is the correct estimate. But let's look at our last answer choice just to be sure. Again, it's two yards. That would be like the width of two doors put next to each other. That would be one huge dog. So I don't think that's the correct answer choice. The correct answer choice is two feet because the length of a dog is about the length of two hammers. Next, we want to know the estimate for the height of a house. Now that's going to be really big. So our answer choice of 10 yards already seems to make sense to me. But let's look at our other answer choices just to be sure. 10 inches, is your house as tall as 10 bottle caps put on top of each other? No way, it's way bigger than that. So 10 inches makes no sense. 10 feet is getting closer. That's like putting 10 hammers on top of each other. Now that's getting big, but is it big enough for the height of your whole house? I don't think so. Look at the size of this house. It even has two floors. So the best estimate for the height of this house is 10 yards. 10 yards is really like 30 feet because there are three feet in one yard. So in my best estimate, I think if we took the width of 10 yards and put them on top of each other, we would have the height of one house. So the best estimate is 10 yards. Let's take a look at our final object, the length of a couch. Now, have you ever laid down on a couch? Let's think about this reasonably. I am about six feet tall, a little bit shorter, but six feet tall is a good estimate for me. So when I lay down on a couch flat, I pretty much fit perfectly. There may be a little bit of extra room on the end, or I might not have enough room, but it's about six feet. So I think six feet is a great estimate. Six yards is way too long. That's like having the world's biggest couch. And six inches is way too small. You would never be able to fit on that couch. Can you imagine a couch that's only six bottle caps long? I couldn't. So the correct answer choice is six feet because I know that I am six feet and I fit perfectly on a couch. Remember, boys and girls, when you want to estimate measurements, you can use the objects on this sheet to help you estimate. They're great references. But don't be afraid to make your own references to help you estimate. Thanks for watching, boys and girls, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new videos. Find links to our apps in the comments below.